There are several types of DNA sequencing methods, but I'm going to talk about two of those, Sanger sequencing and pyrosequencing. What is DNA sequencing? It's the process of determining the nucleic acid sequence, so the order of nucleotides in DNA. And the nucleotides are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. So it's a way to look at the A's, G's, C's, and T's. What's so important about DNA sequencing? Well, the applications for this is absolutely endless. It can be used to help with diagnosing disease such as cancer, it can be used to help ID potential target drugs. It can help guide patient treatment. It can be used in organismal archaeology, which if you look to the far left of the screen, you see a phylogenic tree. So from an evolutionary standpoint, it takes a closer look at how organisms are related. It can also be used in genealogy to trace your ancestry. It can be used to solve crimes. I'm sure you've all seen TV shows and movies where DNA was left at a crime scene and after utilizing um, DNA sequencing, they were able to match the DNA to someone who committed the crime and solved the crime. It can also be used in paternity testing as well as farming applications. DNA sequencing is also used in comparative genomics, and that's looking at things from an evolutionary standpoint in a variety of different ways. Researchers can use um, this looking at common features of different organisms. They can look at closely related species uh, just to see if well, which genomic elements are unique to each. They can also look at genetic differences within one species, such as our own, that can reveal variants that could play a role in disease. There are many different fields that utilize DNA sequencing. There's medicine, forensic science, virology, biotechnology, ecology, agriculture, and pharmacology, just to name a few. The first method of DNA sequencing that I'll go over is Sanger sequencing. It was developed in 1977 by Frederick Sanger. It is a very slow process and it has a higher cost associated with it. It uses chain termination and the DNA to be sequenced cannot be longer than 1,000 base pairs, and only one strand can be sequenced at a time. There are many uses for this method, such as using it as um, target DNA sequencing. It can be used um, in cancer and genetic disease research, gene expression analysis, human identification, pathogen detection, microbial sequencing, and those are just a few. There are a few things you need to perform the Sanger sequencing method. That is DNA polymerase enzymes, a primer, four DNA nucleotides, your template DNA for sequencing, and dideoxynucleotides uh, for the chain terminating um, of all four nucleotides. The DD here stands for dideoxynucleotide, and each of these are labeled with a different color dye. Dideoxynucleotides are similar to regular or deoxynucleotides, but with one key difference. They lack a hydroxyl group on the three prime carbon of the sugar ring. In a regular nucleotide, the three prime hydroxyl group acts as a hook, if you will, allowing a nucleotide to be added to an existing chain. Below you can see the illustrations of the dideoxynucleotide or DDNTP, and then below that the deoxynucleotide, the DNTP. 
Here we have a very simple illustration of the Sanger sequencing method. So the first step, heat is used to denature your DNA. And then multiple copies of a segment are made. And then a primer is attached. And four polymerase solutions are added. And as you can see, they are the multicolored dyes. And then those co complementary chains are allowed to grow until termination occurs. And then those chains are denatured. And then you run the four solutions through electrophoresis. This is another illustration of Sanger sequencing, and it is a little bit more simplified and showing you a little bit more on the back side. So we can see where the primer comes into the template DNA. The primer attaches the five prime end to the three prime end of the template DNA. The DNTPs are added with the DDTTPs, or CTP, ATP, GTP. And then once those are added, primary extension and chain termination takes place. After all of that is complete, then you run your electrophoresis. Once that is complete, the data is transferred to a computer and you get a really nice chromatogram. And basically that looks like a lot of zigzags that are brightly colored. And that is your nucleotide sequence. And that gives you your DNA sequence with G's and T's and C's and A's. Here is a short video on how Sanger sequencing works. So please watch this and it will put both of the illustrations together in a really neat illustration on Sanger sequencing. Pyro sequencing. This is the second DNA sequencing method that we are going to look at. It was developed in 2005 and it's a fast process compared to Sanger sequencing and a much lower cost associated with it. It is sequencing by synthesis. It has a short read length. It detects the release of pyrophosphate and it is synthesis of multiple strands of varying lengths. And it has several uses. Um, one of those, for example, is single nucleotide polymorphism analysis and sequencing short stretches of DNA. When you choose to use pyro sequencing as your method for DNA sequencing, you need a few things that are different from Sanger sequencing. You do need a primer and a DNA template, but you also need four enzymes, DNA polymerase, ATP sulfurylase, luciferase, and apurase. You also need two substrates, adenosine 5 prime phosphosulfate or APS and luciferin. Remember pyro sequencing is sequencing by synthesis. So in DNA synthesis a DNTP is attached to the 3 prime end of the growing DNA strand. The two phosphates on the end are released as pyrophosphate, or PPI. ATP sulfurylase uses pyrophosphate and APS, adenosine 5' prime phosphosulfate, to make ATP. Luciferase is the enzyme that causes fireflies to glow. It uses luciferin and ATP as substrates, converting luciferin to oxyluciferin and releasing visible light. The amount of light released is proportional to the number of nucleotides added to the new DNA strand. After the reaction has completed, apyrase 
is added to destroy any leftover DNTPs. All right, I just talked about how luciferase is the enzyme that allows fireflies to glow. And luciferase, what it does, this enzyme emits light in the presence of ATP. And what is so super cool about this enzyme is that several organisms produce luciferases in nature, such as the American firefly, or as we affectionately refer to it in the South, the lightning bug, and also the fairly recently discovered jack-o'-lantern mushroom. It's poisonous, but guys, this thing glows, if you can believe that, a mushroom that actually glows, hence the name jack-o'-lantern mushroom. And what is also extremely exciting is this is an enzyme found in nature that we're able to utilize in science in the power sequencing method. And it's very important to this process. Who says science isn't cool? Here we have a simple illustration that illustrates pyro sequencing from start to finish. So it includes all of the ingredients, if you will, needed to perform the pyro sequencing method. Um, so you have your primer, your DNA template, all of the enzymes and substrates, and it uses a camera as well as a computer to generate the data. And you will see all of that put together in the next slide. There is a very short video um, that is super neat and it is explained in great detail as far as how this method comes together to work. And remember luciferase um, there in the bottom left corner, you see that um, that is where when ATP comes in and in the presence of that, it will emit the flash of light. And that flash of light is when we are washing our um, templates with different color dyes, then we can see those flashes emit every time a certain nucleotide shows up. So it will flash a certain color for um, A's, T's, C's, G's, so this is super important to this process, hence the name pyro sequencing. Pyro is a Greek word pure, which means fire. So think fire, flash, flash of light. Um, and sometimes this actually can be related to heat in chemistry as well. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction into DNA sequencing as far as what it is, why we use it, um, fields that it is used in, and the applications for those, as well as two of the popular methods of DNA sequencing, Sanger sequencing, which was the original method, and pyro sequencing. Thanks for watching.